No, no, it's okay. It's fine. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Christie's Hong Kong here, where I'm standing amongst a couple of paintings for the Contemporary Art Asia Kids at Heart online auction. Um, we're going to be waiting for Emmanuel Harris, specialist of contemporary art, and also the person who put together this um, sale to join us for today's conversation, Curating from the Heart. Um, I'm just going to see whether or not Emma, so we're going to wait for Emma to be on. Emma, are you on? She's online. You have to add her. Yeah. Hi, Emma. Hi. Hi. Am I not too fuzzy? Is it okay? No, it's not too bad. Um, okay. Welcome. So we have me behind. So he's actually my um, videographer for today. So I can't actually see your face. But, we're gonna, but we thought that the quality of the video might be better. Um, so I'm starting off. I'm standing over here. If you want to move forward a little bit. Um, and I'm going to introduce um, Emma, I mentioned just now. So Emma is Associate Specialist and Head of Sale of Online Paintings for the Modeling Contemporary Art section. Um, but as the online sale, the works are in Hong Kong, but Emma herself is actually in Paris. So Emma, do you want to share a little bit about how you curated um, this online sale during lockdown? Yes, so it was easy. So just so everyone understands, I'm part of the Hong Kong team, but I'm based in Europe because a lot of the business getting also happens in Europe. A lot of um, Asian artists worked in Europe and the works are still here today. So that's the reason I'm based here. And um, as I was heading the online sale, the plan was to have me uh, sent to Hong Kong uh, during the months of April and May. But of course, uh, lockdown happened and all the flights were grounded. So I'm stuck here. Uh, we didn't change the plan, you know, it was it was still um, going to be the same sale, uh, the same system. It was just that I had to work remotely uh, with the time difference, with all the trouble that comes with it. But, you know, I think it went pretty well. Uh, we have an amazing team who was, you know, very easy to work with, even during these challenging times. And uh, that's how we made it work. So uh, some some things I remember that there were some um, uh, photography uh, sessions that started at 10 a.m. in Hong Kong, so it was 4 a.m. in Paris, and I had to wake up and, and do a video call so I could give my instructions to the photographer. <laughs> but it, so it, it all I know, went you brought, I know you've had kind of a couple of sleepless nights, and you <laughs> had some um, really interesting days working with technology. So Emma and I trialed this a few days ago just to make sure we weren't too technologically behind. But um, I really, the reason why I decided to have this conversation with Emma was because I really like the concept of the, the title of this, this time, which was um, Kids at Heart. And, and I think uh, something on Emma's, a, a photo that you posted really inspired me to kickstart this conversation. And if you see kind of in the gallery today, we've got a wonderful selection of artworks that's part of the online sale. So perhaps, um, Emma, maybe you could explain the concept of how you came up with the idea, Kids at Heart, and kind of any narratives and storylines behind that. What inspired you? So I think that for every sale, um, it's important to find a theme so that you can create a storyline around it and not just throw works of art like a garage sale. Um, just try to tell a story, even though the artists probably didn't know each other. Um, they probably didn't paint at the same time, but still art is, you know, it's a, it's a tool of communication. It communicates with us, but I think that they also communicate with each other. Um, so the theme, the theme kid at heart is also very personal because I, you know, I believe I'm still a kid at heart. Um, and I know that a lot of people around me still are just because we're grown up. So we've got serious jobs and, and responsibilities don't also mean that, you know, we don't like fooling around and, you know, um, trying new things, uh, being curious about new adventures, uh, which is, I think, what defines a child's spirit. Um, a lot of these works are... Uh, maybe an interpretation of uh, childhood. Um, maybe it's going to be a theme that, child, that children like, um, or it's going to be something that I personally liked when I was a child. Um, if you see around, if you look at the exhibition, you can see that one thing that really um, links all the works is the colorfulness of each of them. You know, they're all very bright colors. Um, they're playful. They're, you know, they make you want to, uh, to please the child that's still in you. Um, and I think that, so one of the, thing, one of the, the, um, the things that came to mind was that 
um, a lot of children grow up today, um, you know, going from school to cram school to tutoring to, you know, piano classes, ballet classes. And it was kind of my childhood. Um, and I think that there's a part of ourselves that's maybe a little frustrated and uh, wants to reconnect with a child that didn't have enough time to be a child. So, you know, just because you're 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years old <laughs> doesn't mean that you can't still enjoy manga. You know, I still watch uh, Studio Ghibli films, even at my age. Um, I, you know, I love playing with my niece and nephew. Um, you know, I get as excited as them playing Lego. And I think that's what, you know, makes me a, a kid at heart. Oh, so I see that you're standing. Yeah, go ahead. No, I love the idea of kind of kid at heart because it's true. I think when we talk about not just collecting or having a sense of art or enjoying art, it always kind of tugs at your heartstrings or it creates an emotional connection to not just your childhood, but just things that really were important or, or were milestones in your life. And I think some of the things you said about just playing and having fun, I'm stopping at this work, which is a work by Ayo Nako. Rokaku, is that correct? Yes. And she yes, actually painted this with her fingers. And that's kind of the whole idea of finger painting, making a mess of things. I think that kind of really embodies that concept of being a kid at heart, like having fun. Completely. So she paints like a kid in her technique. So as you say, finger painting, that's how most people start painting. And she uses very bright colors because that's what usually kids are attracted to. The way she paints too, you know, it's these kids with very round heads, really big eyes that kind of remind you of manga. Um, the brush stroke is also very lively. Um, I don't know if you have a picture of Rokaku painting. Um, she, you know, yeah. she, you know, sometimes she'll be kneeling on the floor and she'll paint like a kid or sometimes it'll be up on a stretcher and she'll, you know, she'll paint vertically. But, you know, she'll really use her body mm -hmm. and her heart to paint. And I think that's, what, that's what's important. When artists paint with their heart, collectors can collect with their heart because there's a, there's a common language between the two. You know, you see that kid, she's holding her teddy bear. Uh, she's surrounded by flowers. She's got her little, you know, pink scrunchie up here. It's, it's you know, art can be a lot of fun. Um, I think that, you know, art... can remind you of your childhood. It can make you want to reconnect with a, a very fun time in your life. So this is what I'd like to promote in the sale. Oh yes, that's the, the finger painting. So, so you that's can- the photo that you wanted to talk about, right? Exactly. Um, maybe I'll stand here so it's not overlapping on the image. So if you come closer to, you wanted to share. So this is a shot that um, Emma shared with me of how the artist, um, was this, this the exact work she was painting? Uh, no, that's not the work, unfortunately, but it's the style. <laughs> oh. um, another example you wanted to talk about was the Daniel Arsham piece, right? The Game Boy. So I can pull up that work as well. Yes. So it's, um, so that's also something that's quite personal, but I think that will um, bring personal memories for everyone. Because as a kid, I spent a lot of time on my Game Boy. Um, and, you know, it's, it reminds me of a time where I think everything was more carefree. Um, I remember taking it on holidays and just spending, you know, way too much time on it. Um, and it's something that probably is also a part of Daniel Arsham, the artist's uh, childhood. And that's why he probably chose this piece. He made a cast out of it and used crystal um, to, to Im immortalize the piece. Um, it's see-through, so it gives a really nice aesthetic effect to it. Um, so I think it, it talks about two things. One thing is, of course, very personal, you know, the, the, the games, um, the time you can spend on, 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 of course, a Game Boy. But it's also representative of a time, not only of our lives, but in history, because at one time, all the kids in the world were playing the Game Boy. Um, so, you know, I think that this, this work has uh, a part, uh, has its role in the sale uh, to define the theme of Kid at Heart. What do you think of that piece, I, Sarah? <laughs> I remember the last time Emma and I had this conversation about um, 
the Czech PR, not in general, but I think specifically, like, even kind of a little bit on Daniel Arsham was that Emma's going to be kind of my go-to person to become this, like, to know more about the hip and contemporary art pieces. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I'm think, not very um, I think today, Emma, you're, you're okay. You have um, an announcement with regards to your upcoming sale, right, um, that relates to this artist that you could share with us. Oh, yes. Well, thank you for uh, letting me share this. Um, so we've just announced a couple of days ago that we are going to dedicate an online sale solely to Daniel Arsham. I think that he's a very important artist that a lot of people know of, of course, but not enough people know of. Um, he He's doing both a very popular art that's easy for everyone to understand, very uh, philosophical in a sense. You know, it's a... Um, it's a reflection on time, on how, on materiality, on how objects have defined our culture at one time in our society, like this Game Boy, for example, but he has, you know, casts of other objects that have, uh, um, that have, uh, sorry, um, represented one time of our culture at a, at a certain point in time. Um, so, but his works are also very playful um, you know, it's, it's, it's even for someone who doesn't really think of all these philosophical considerations. Um, you know, he, he's working with Dior at the present, um, doing a collaboration with them. Uh, he is collaborating with Pokemon. I'm, I'm sure that you've seen the new t-shirts at Uniqlo stores, uh, where he, uh, reworked the Pikachu figure. Um, he's yes. done collaborations with Adidas, you know, he's doing a, a working with them on the line of shoes. You know, he's a very hip artist, um, both accessible to everyone and very intelligent. So I think that more people should know about him. That's great. You know, I think um, some of the things you mentioned just now with um, Ayako's piece about figure painting and you constantly being on your Game Boy lends very nicely to the next um, topic that we were talking about, which is not just kind of what reminds us of childhood, but some of the things that really um, set, what set kind of children or people apart when they grew up in the 80s and 90s. And I think that has a lot to do in Asia with manga and anime. Um, and I think, Emma, some of your favorite Japanese kind of manga cartoons are, are part of the sale as well, right? Yes, yeah, so there's a very small section of uh, animation cells from, um, from manga that defined my childhood, actually. So my favorite is probably Dragon Ball. Um, uh, yeah, and we've got that on, and we're gonna actually go to the piece. Yeah, let's go take a look. So I think that, uh, so Christie sells art, serious art, Picasso, Manet, Batiste, and it's, you know, it, art is not only um, for, for, let me put it this way. I think that everyone can collect art, and art should be defined by whoever looks at it. So for me, um, a Picasso work is art, but an animation cell is also art in the sense that it can move you, it can you know, define your way, the, define the way you look at the world, um, it can entertain you, it can, you know, I've cried in front of animation movies, who hasn't? Um, so, uh, like this, this one's personally my favorite because it's from the very beginning of this the, one uh, <laughs> adventure. Yes, yes. So yeah. Son Goku still has his monkey tail, and his you know his friend Krillin, who's going to become his best friend, is still his enemy. You know, there's this little, um, they're still rivals at the beginning of the arc. Um, and so I chose um, manga cells from manga that I watched personally. And that's, you know, that's also something that you can do when you're head of sale is that you can uh, say <laughs> yes or no, depending on your own taste. So actually this comes from a larger collection of manga. And there were other sales from movies that I didn't watch as a kid and I didn't take them in the sale, not because they're not worth anything, but because they didn't speak to me as much. And the theme of this talk is curating with the heart. And, you know, if you curate with the heart, um, you know, the work has to mean something to you. So this is, I, I hope that people can uh, recognize her. This is Nausicaa from, the, uh, from Miyazaki's movie. She's one of my favorite characters. She's this really strong princess, um, you know, who flies on this 
glider across the skies in a post-apocalyptic world. And of course, she saves the world. Um, and, you know, she, she's so amazing. And that's why I wanted to show her in the sale. What's ma what makes this work particularly rare is that it is signed by Hayao Miyazaki, which is very, it's very really rare. Cool. Yes, it's so cool. It's it signed and dated. And uh, that's, that's quite rare to find. Um, you have also other animation cells that were picked out of episodes. And maybe you can even recognize one of your favorite episodes that you were watching as a kid. Um, you know, the, the no, I find this really interesting because as I look at the cell itself, I think it's called a digital print cell. But on the side, I, I, is it printed on, is it printed on um, a laminate or is it actual... Or is it printed kind of on reverse on laminate? Yeah, it looks it's like it's reverse. So if we look to the side, we can actually, it looks three dimensional. Um, and we can see that um, the signature and the image is actually a little bit detached from the backing paper and gives it that kind of three dimensionality effect. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, all, it's almost cool. a sculpture. So there are no, two different types of cells. Um, you have the printed ones, which are um, more common to find, I'd say, and the hand-painted ones. For example, uh, this one, yes, I believe it's hand-painted one. Um, they're unique, and they were actually painted they're... by the studio members and used during the movie or the during the TV series. So this is actually this was actually used uh, during the this is Kiki delivery service um, during that movie. And you know it's it's unique. It's a collectible. Some people are ready to pay a lot of money for 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 this because it represents something that's close to their heart. It was quite different when I see it in person because when I saw them on the website, I thought it would be quite kind of the same. They were just animations, but in person, there's that kind of very interesting three-dimensionality effect. Um, and for those who are who know all kind of um, Miyazaki's works. I think mean, she's fairly iconic, right? And that little little black, I don't know what that's called. So that's also very, very, very cute. So these are really nice. Um, it definitely brings you back to the memories of childhood and that carefreeness, like her standing on the speedboat here, or kind of carefreeness and imagination. And this one yeah. is, what is, what is this story? This is, this is from Ponyo. Ponyo. And this one is Totoro. Is this one Totoro? Yeah. The, the one so. top is Totoro. And this one is Kiki's delivery service. Ah, okay. So I'm obviously not in the know when it comes to Japanese food. <laughs> well, you have but, um, kids. You can watch the Ghibli movies with them. Yeah, I'm going to be um, educating them on Japanese anime. My, kid, my, my son really loves Pokemon. So actually, Pokemon and Pikachu are all the rage now um, yeah. at home. But, so there's also a Pokemon this, cell. Yes, which um, I don't think it's on display at the moment. But no, it's unfortunately is, not on display. But it's it's doing very well. It's already uh, <laughs> it's already smashed yeah, no, I, the mid, I believe. But another kind of aspect of kid at heart, I think, apart from just bringing out nostalgia or, or or playfulness, are also artists who really derive their inspiration or artistic inspiration from their childhood, right? And I think you wanted to start. You wanted to talk about the Miyazaki piece here, which. I think we can talk about Matsaki. Constantly. Yes, I love this piece. So, Mataki is. Mataki. Oh, we might have lost connection, but we'll wait for Emma to um, reconnect. Before that, we can also see. Maybe we can go to this uh, work because I think from far away she's that kind of anime manga thing really strikes you with that flatness. But as you talk about, there's actually some really cute details into the work um, and very kind of typical manga type expressions. You can see how you've got those the big eyes. Um, elongated, kind of elongated, but you can see also the, the depiction of the artist with, with the water. It's like very, very sparkly. It's clear. You can see through to the seashells. And then you've got this little girl here who, 
who really caught my eye um, with her expression and, and kind of the big contrast between I'm the so girl sorry. and the center one. Did you get disconnected? Yeah, so much better. Oh, it's much clearer. You're, you're much clearer now. <laughs> oh, good, good. Uh, yeah. Sorry for the tech difficulty. Um, no worries. We've moved to the Mr. We've actually moved to the Mr. painting now. Yes. Isn't this wonderful how you can see artists uh, being inspired what, from what they saw when they were kids? You know, this is totally the manga type of iconography. Um, you know, the big eyes, the clear skin, the, the flowy hair. You, you can see that this is totally in the manga style. And he has made something quite, quite different out of it. It's a very personal reinterpretation of what he saw as a child and how he views the world today. I love the detail on the work. Um, you know, I saw that you did a close up on the child uh, with the with the. Yeah, I really like this little girl here, but it's also that contrast between kind of her her size and and the girl in the middle, and the, girl. And the seashells. So maybe we can do a detail from here, going up, and Emma can talk a little bit about it. Yes, well, there's definitely work on perspective, and you're right to point that out. You know, the, the difference between the size of the, the girl in the, in the forefront and the tiny little kids in the background. Um, I, look, I love the detail of the ocean, you know, how sparkly it is and how, you know, with, with such a simple technique, you know, he actually brings out all the colors um, with such delicacy. And he's, you know, it's, again, it's fun art. It's not serious art, but it's something that talks to you, that goes straight to your heart. It's something that you probably want to, you know, look at every day hanging at home. Um, it's yeah. the... the, it's the that freshness, bigger, pop, like, sunshine type of... The title of... It really elevates your mood when you look at it. And uh, Rainy Caesar is over, I guess. You know, it's a very positive message. Uh, I hope that, that the Rainy Caesar is going to be over soon for the entire planet. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's just... I think that what really links all the works in the sale is that they're fun, they're hip, they're colorful, and they're something that you actually want to hang in your house every day. Yeah, that was a really great piece. Um, but I don't think we can end or we can't have this conversation without talking about the piece that is the center or kind of takes the stage um, in representing the whole online sale, which is this fighting, uh, fight it out work by, by Nara. And um, Emma, I don't know what kind of how you decided that this was going to be the work as kind of the hero image or to represent the sale. Well, we get something very personal. It's the hero image because it's my favorite work. Uh, not only because it's one of the most expensive ones, but genuinely, I think that it speaks to a lot of us. Um, I think that you know we're all fighting something. Um, we've all got an internal fight, or we're all fighting for our rights or for something that we believe in. Um, and we're, I think that it represents a lot of our fighting spirit. It also represents how hard it was to, uh, to do the sale. Oh, so yeah, you put face to face um, uh, what Nara himself posted on his Twitter. Um, kids just having fun with art, oh. you know. It's just <laughs> Sorry, that was... <laughs> Yeah. Technology is still not our friend. Instagram. <laughs> so, you know, he just put face to face um, his. Uh, so, this kid played around with this painting and just imitated it with his own boxing gloves and his own interpretation of it. And I love that even Nara is a kid at heart. And, you know, he plays with this, with, with this and the internet, how it catches on. Um, so, um, this is a work on paper, a colored pencil. It's not the, the largest work, but it's definitely, I think, one of the most important works in the sale. Um, first of all, the theme is quite, um, is, is, uh, is quite uh, how, how would I say this? It speaks to all of us. Uh, yeah. The way it's drawn also is both cute and combative. I think that's also how we are. You know, we present ourselves uh, in, um, in our, you know, in our best lights, um, but sometimes we you know we're also fighting something. Um, I love how these little teeth poke out of the mouth and give him this kind of menacing look, and you know his two little wrinkles here between the eyes. But still, he's a really cute little character with this 
you know, the sweet onesie and the, uh, and the ears hanging. Um, and it shows both sides of who we can be. And I believe this is actually drawn on the back of an envelope, right? Yes. So, like, <laughs> so Nara would do that a lot. The mix is interesting because it actually says handle with care upside down. At the bottom, you've got this kind of fighting in red. Um, and I think in everyday conversation for the Japanese, they love to say fighting, you know, as a sign of, you know, to support each other, to encourage each other, um, and to really kind of lift other people's people's spirits. So, so I can see why this is one of your, I can see why this is your favorite piece. Um, then you've also kind of taken this and added on the beginning of the cell. So it has a couple of naras, right? And I think this selection is the one that, uh, yes, so um, this actually brings to the way you, you build the sail and how you do the layout of a sail. Um, if you can look at, if you look at the sail on the internet, um, the works are shown three by three and you mm -hmm. have to keep that in mind because it's a very visual sail. So this is lot one. Um, and then you've got the Nara fighting lot two, and then you've got the one next to it, Nara, um, looking to the left. And if you see the one at the left is looking to the right, the one in the center is looking in front, and the one in the right is looking to the left. And there's a little play. Oh, with yeah. and we, should have, how, we should have hung them up that way. <laughs> yeah, too bad. <laughs> but I guess that's um, how I also show that works can communicate with each other. Here they communicate only with their eyes, but it it brings a, a very nice visual effect. And that's something that you have to keep in mind uh, when you're presenting a sale online because all of it is only visual. Here we have the chance to have a small exhibition with the highlights, but most of the time online sales will, will not be shown uh, in person. And most people will, are currently not in Hong Kong um, and will only bid online um, from their own <laughs> locations so you have to make the work visually pleasing and that's uh that's how you know i tried working and playing with that and apart from um these works on paper which are editions of 25 i know that you also have some sculptural works by Nara too right so um same artists but different um different categories and design. yeah so here you can see on the little icon face to face two mori girls by nara which are basically the same design, but different editions. So the one on the left is, is taller, it's 30 centimeters high. And um, the one on the right is only 11 centimeters high. And there's a, of course, there's a price difference, um, but it just shows that you can, you can collect um, a piece that you love. And if it's not in your price range, maybe you can find the same one in another edition number. Um, it will be smaller, it'll be maybe not as rare, but at least have a piece in a work from one of your favorite artists. Yeah, no, I really like it. And, and um, you mentioned, you alluded just now to kind of the way you curated the sale. Um, and a question probably on a lot of people's minds, uh, kind of strategies for how to bid on the sale. The sale closes, uh, the sale closes June 5th. Next. Next Friday? Next Friday, yes. Next Friday. And so you've been not sleeping for how many days? <laughs> Let's not even count them. <laughs> uh, so you've been kind of working across time zones for a number of days now. But for those who are actually interested to bid on a piece, say, maybe we should go to the Kusama, because we haven't spoken about Kusama yet, um, with, with, you know, like her dots and, and, and things. But for those who are actually interested to bid, what would your advice be on bidding for an online sale versus a live sale when you actually need to be there at a certain time on a certain, um, on a certain date. Right, so the, bid the bidding period is two weeks. We started last Friday and we're ending it next Friday. My advice, uh, if you want to, to really get the piece that you love, is to put in the first bid. That, that way you kind of maybe deter the other clients. Uh, they're like, oh, someone's already on it. Maybe I'm not gonna even try. And you have a good chance of having it from the start. And then once you're registered and you put your first bid, um, you just, you know, just wait until the end of the sale. Uh, maybe check back two days before it closes. Uh, see if someone bid against you. If no one bid against you, then just, you know, wait it out. You're going to get a little alert if someone bids against you. And um, you might be the lucky person until the end of the sale. 
So my, my advice is to put one first bid at the very beginning, wait it out, and then in the next, I think most of the bids will arrive in the last 48 hours. That's usually how it goes. Uh, people get excited in the end. Um, there's this, you know, there's this rife rivality between everyone. They're just fighting against each other to get the lot that they want. So um, stay connected in the very last minutes. And we've got to make sure we get the time zone right. So it closes on Hong Kong time, which means you'll be up in the wee hours of the morning monitoring that as well, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it closes exactly at noon Hong Kong time and at midnight New York time. Uh, we wanted it to be quite reasonable for as many time zones as possible. And so if somebody puts in a last minute bid, right, you said kind of the bidding continues, right? The bidding for that lot extends for another five minutes? So um, actually it's three minutes. So let's say three that minutes. it closes at 12.00 and someone puts in a bid against you three minutes before the end of the sale. You have three minutes to bid against him. And if you don't, then the sale closes at noon. But if you bid against him at, say, 11.59, the sale extends three more minutes so that he has three minutes to bid against you, and so on and so on. So a sale can actually keep on going for 20, 30, 40 minutes if two people are adamant on fighting for one lot. But most of the time, it's an extra 10 minutes. It's not going to be too long. Well, I hope that you get a lot of kind of this last minute, super competitive bidding for all the lots um, yeah. in your cell for this time. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, Emma, for joining us today. Uh, we do have, I know you're the one who put this cell together, but what would be the piece you want to end on? What would you like me to kind of stand by? We've got Paws, we've got the Japanese anime, we've got New Year, we've got Metsaki, we've got Warhol, we've got Naras, Kusamas, and Mystic. So, where shall we take, where shall I lead our audience to? Or what would you like me to take? Um, no, what our... would you like to talk about? Tell me, you know, you're, you can be the master. <laughs> of the talk. Tell me which, which um, work, if we had to, you know, if you could take one home, which one would it be and why? Oh, oh, that's a tricky one. I've always, <laughs> actually, I've always, I'm, I'm quite, I, I'm always, I've always been a Kusama fan, but I think having gone through all the different lots with, in your cell this time, I've definitely learned a lot more about anime and manga. Um, I've always wanted to, to, to have that Mondrian type movie of So maybe we can stop here. Because this is a piece that I remember once seeing in Beijing more than 10 years ago. And I thought, oh, I'd love to have um, a piece by him. And sadly, I never have. <laughs> so maybe I think what we, did, what we haven't talked about is Chinese contemporary artists. Maybe we can just quickly wrap up on Chinese contemporary artists to end their session today on how you created and chose the artist. That's true. Well, Liu Ye, of course, is unmissable in online, especially one that is themed kid at heart because he loves painting these kids in a very quiet manner. Um, I think that the ones that we, the other ones that we saw a bit louder, uh, these are quite um, introverted. You can see this, this child is in her, she's daydreaming. Uh, you can imagine a lot of different scenarios of, on what she's dreaming about. There's a, if you go back to the one um, on the right, uh, there is a, a Mondrian painting lying on the floor. Um, it's, of course, a, referen a reference to, to one of the, the masters of, our, of art history and constructivism. Um, and I guess one of the artists who most influenced Liu Ye. This girl is wearing these traditional shoes and, you know, high rising white socks. This very, you know, she, but she's crying and, you know, there's millions of different interpretations on why these years exist. Um, I love this type of art that can just, mm. that you can just look at for hours, and ask so many questions, answer them yourself yeah. and create a story around them. Oh, thank you. That's a very poignant way to wrap up um, our conversation today. Because I think while while we talk about art pieces, that, oh hold on, I gotta tell them to turn off the the, the, the vacuum cleaner. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Um, while we talk about art pieces that are 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 art pie
know, it's also a part of childhood. I, I, I know a lot of uh, friends who are in a club. It, there's a sense of, of congregation groups and friendship in this painting uh, that will, of course, speak to a lot of people. Um, oh, you're back. <laughs> Sorry, it goes to show this is a truly a live stream because we suddenly had yes. <laughs> but um, I'd like to kind of take this opportunity to kind of does anyone on the live stream today have any questions they want to ask Eva or anything in particular with regards to the sale, the work that they'd like to talk about or, or ask? Yep, yeah, it's open. It's the perfect so. opportunity now, and I don't want to put Emma on the spot. Ask away. But I think it's so. It's that tricky for you, but I'm sure we have some Christie's and students um, in, in France who are French speaking. So if you'd like to say hello in French, please feel free to do so because I won't be able to, to do that. <laughs> Bonjour à tous, merci d'avoir regardé cette vidéo. <laughs> yeah. Okay, if there's no questions, then I think we can wrap it up. Um, of course, we're always available. You can send me an email. Not at all, thank you. Before we end, I think we hold still. I think you will be able to take a shot for us to do as the cover. Let's do a shot by cost, wrap up. But I'd like to thank Emma for her, her time today and for her sharing, you know, the, the reasons she created the sale, some of the inspirations that, um, that she took from it as well as thinking about some of her favorite So if she, if I hold still here, you can take a shot for us. <laughs> Thank you so much, Emma. Thanks for joining us. Thank Best you, Sarah. Best of luck the auction. Um, and I thank hope you for joining us for upcoming live streams on the different online auctions that you're going to be putting together in the future. With pleasure. Thank you so much for organizing. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye.